With less than 110 days to the 2023 election, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has raised concerns over 600 pre-election cases creating uncertainty. There's also a strange call to change the schedule of election to have presidential elections last by a group. Nigeria police under the headship of IGP Usman Babakali, responsible for the election security, has taken a bold and proactive measure. First initiative of convening a three-day conference retreat for senior police officers in the ranks of DIGs and AIG commissioners of police of the 36 states and the FCT aimed at understanding novel provisions of the 2022 Electoral Act as it relates to the role of security agencies. To underscore the significance of the retreat tagged, the imperative of Nigerian police strategic plan for peaceful elections, and a quote, President Muhammadu Buhari personally attended the event at Oweri, the Imo state capital, to declare open the conference before his trip overseas. So joining us now on the morning show to discuss the rule of law enforcement agents as we head towards 2023 elections, understanding the trend and drivers of election violence in Nigeria. It's Mr. Mike Higini, former INEC resident, electoral commissioner for Akwaibon State. Welcome to the show. I mean, yeah, the role of police and law enforcement agents are really very critical. Maybe it's faith or providence or whatever you want to call it. That same state that that police conference was held was the same state that was decided by the court based on a police report. Well, um, Rafai, thank you and Dr. Abadi for, for having me. Um, clearly, we have a question of this to the 2023 elections. The working of democracy is based on the understanding that all who have a role to play must stand tall to play that role for a successful democracy. Elections, as we have said over and again, period. It's a period that people look up to around the world. Just as you look up to Christmas period, Salah, or Easter. Because it's a period where a people who are under a democracy are expected to renew the journey of their country. Particularly of those who have been in charge and the policies that have evolved within a certain period. That is the whole essence of electoral democracy. That the election will now provide people the authority to be able to exercise power. Now, the retreat that took place in um, Oweri, I want to start first and foremost by way of an acknowledgement of the fact that in the last, around June or July, and particularly when I was leaving office, I, at the, at the uh, farewell address that I made, I acknowledge, like all Nigerians, the nature of security policing we have witnessed in recent times under the current leadership of the IG. Nobody thought that we could put through an umbra. Even myself, I was, I mean, we were all very worried if we could go through Anabra, a view of what was going on in Anabra at that time. But surprisingly, security under the leadership of the IGP were able to provide an atmosphere for that election to take place. And the nature of security we saw in Anabra, in Ekiti, in Oshun, they have a different class from our immediate past experience. And that is why we were able to acknowledge it. Because when you recognize and acknowledge something that has been done well, you are basically reinforcing the kind of behavior you want to see again. And that's what Nigeria wants to see. That by 2023, that's the kind of thing you want to do. So now, this retreat that was convened, what is most interesting, I think people have, you have a little clip of what the president said will be very important here yeah, for this conversation. That an IGP, the Nigerian police, that is in charge of internal security and of course be on the driver's seat of preparing the country in terms of security for elections, have to say that, look, they need to have a meeting, a conference, a retreat for all senior officers from the rank of police uh, CP down to AIG, the DIG, across 
the entire 17, you know, zonal commands, 36 states, to come together. That for them to be effective, they want to know the provisions of the 2022 Electoral Act as it relates to their duties. And that they want to ensure that that is cascaded down. Because they want to know what exactly do they want to police on election day. And by inviting people from outside the police establishment, some of us were given the privilege, it was clear that they needed to have an objective, you know, a far more objective view of their own process. That was the whole essence. And so the statement of Mr. President himself was very defining. It was clear that he is given full power, he has given all powers, and that's the commander-in-chief himself, to the Nigerian police to ensure that the 2023 election must reflect the true wishes of the Nigerian people. That was a very watershed statement. Now, the president has spoken. It is now left for all security agencies in the country to use and to take the president's statement as a shield in carrying out that constitutional duty of ensuring that one, as their core value, they must maintain absolute unqualified neutrality in the process of preparing for the election, the period of the pre-election, the election day itself, and more also after the election. And that is why the general topic, the imperative of a Nigerian police strategic plan for a peaceful election becomes very apt. I was asked to speak on the role, which part of which you just uh, highlighted, of Nigerian police in, you know, this election. As well also to look at the trend of election violence in Nigeria. May I say this here? That whereas we have about seven critical stake stakeholders whose responsibility will be very impactful in the 2023 election, Three of the seven are very key, which are the EMB, the Election Management Body itself, INEC, where I had worked before, that is going to be on the driver's seat. Number two is judiciary, and of course, the security. What this IGP leadership and his team, management team, have done is very interesting, that they need to understand the provision of the 2022 Electoral Act for them to be effective. That is, this is a part, a, 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 an Electoral Act that has nine parts, 153 provisions, including or rather in addition to INEC regulations and guidelines that have a total of more than six clauses. Most of these things are not as understood by politicians. That's the problem we're having. Now, in terms of the key issues that Work out of this conference is the fact that first, when you look about the drivers of election violence, I want to say here that 95% of the problem we are having in our country today is a problem arising from the political class. Politicians are responsible for the crisis of violence in election in our country. They are responsible. And that's why I was saying that in this election, IRS television will not be on the ballot. The Nigerian police will not be on the ballot, nor will INEC be on the ballot. And of course, the judiciary. But all these institutions I've mentioned, they will be on trial because election period is the period where the commitment of institution of state to the ideal of that state are tested. Now, I have at the lecture pointed out that the first thing the problem we have, which is one of the drivers of violence in Nigeria, is the absence or rather uh, disregard for the rule of law in our democracy. It will seem that rule of law does not matter in our practice democracy. And that has been reflected in the issue about party primaries. You just, in your intro, you have told us what the commission said about 24 hours ago about over 200 cases that are still at the Federal High Court yet to be determined. The effect of all that is that in this 2023 election, 
apart from the presidential candidate that appear to have been settled, the candidation of those who are going for running for governorship, those who are going for House of Assembly, House of Representatives, and senatorial candidates, their fates, many of them are yet to be determined. In effect, as a matter of fact, we are not likely to know the candidate before that election. This is largely because despite the effort that have been made under the 2022 Electoral Act, that would have made it much easier for the court to determine today, talking about disregard for the rule of law, political parties, now submitted and caused to be published, names of people who didn't go through primaries. Now, when they go to, to the judiciary, what are they supposed to do? All you require to do, which I've simplified, is to look at the report of INEC. Okay, Mike. That is what they require to do. Yeah, that need, is not happening. So, we need to manage. The, yeah, this right to the rule of law, the fact that we now have talks, the use of talks, and there's a statutory provision, even in our law, under the 2022 Entra Act, you can highlight it for Nigeria to see. Of course, manipulation and several of these yeah. courses. Okay. So, these are the issues that define violence in our, in our country and it is now the police and every one of us to ensure that this is not allowed to happen. Okay. <clears throat> the key point made by the president, and that of where senior police officers, yes, retreat, which you have also alluded to, is that the police must be apolitical, maintain complete neutrality. And the president promised to make the wherewithal available. From your experience, from one state to the other, is it possible for this Nigerian police to be neutral? And is there anything in the Electoral Act 2022 that will really compel them to be neutral? Because they have been uh, you know, accused over the years of aiding and abetting electoral malpractice. Thank you, uh, Dr. Abati. And that's why I said that we should look at what they have just done recently, and that will let us build from there. In the last few elections, Nigerians have all acknowledged under the current IGP and the Seta team what they have done, the kind of policing that we saw, that needs to be built on. It means that they are doing something in that direction. But as to the issue about going forward, talking about absolute neutrality, impartiality that is expected of them, we must look at the problems associated with the police. One, because of the nature of the police being the closer to the people, one of the problems we find is that political pressure, politicians who pressure commissioners of police, who intimidate security officers. I, am, I mean, I've been in a, in a state where a highly placed politician, in 2011, 2015, Threatening a commander that head will roll because he wanted that commander police to go and allow talks to move into an arena and he refused. It can be done. The last few elections have shown that the police just had to do their job when they are outside the country. They can do better even while in our country, and that's why we need to build on that. And the step that it have the, the current leadership. Of the police have taken is the pathway to go. Now, what do you need to police on election day? What is mostly critical to INEC is time. So the issue about transportation should not arise at all. Getting the security men to the police should not arise. They are to protect time in terms of ensuring that the opening of the poll by 8.30, if you are opening the poll by 8.30 in a rise television here, I assume they're going to be open 8.30 at the toll gate that must happen. So the issue about early money parade that would cause delay, that should not happen. The police authority, the budget for police authority for the transportation of their men should be made available on time. Under the current act, INEC is now expected going forward to be having its budget a year before election. What stopped that from happening in the of police? And as a matter of fact, the Nigerian police, maybe because they don't even value their, they, because they don't vote, and that's why people think that this should not happen. As from 2027, 20, the Nigerian police armed forces, they should vote in this country on a Wednesday preceding 
Saturday election, they may have to vote. And that is why, if they are to vote this country, I am sure that by Wednesday when they vote, they are going to be protected. They also will ensure that on Saturday when the other Nigerian people will vote, they will also have the responsibility to protect their vote. Because they need to vote. They are part of the system. And that's why in US, in that part, even in Ghana here, presidential candidates, they campaign on issues that matter to the police, to the Navy, to the Air Force, to the Army. But today, nobody campaigns to them. It will appear as if they don't even matter. Somebody will spend 35 years he will not vote in a country that will not need to change going forward. But besides all of that, is the fact that the mode of deployment is very important. And I'm very happy from the conversation that came from that uh, retreat that 2023, the deployment order that I'm hearing about, they are going to deal with, is going to be completely different. It's not about fake police. People not reported on duty from the design I had the opportunity of engaging with them. It means that something else is going to be different. And of course, we also made the point at the venue. And look, the idea that few days to election, commissioners of police are posted or removed or having about eight commissioners of police one day is something that should not happen. But more important is the fact that we are in a country right now where we now have Dr. Abati, Association of Togs, who do intrastate togri and also do interstate uh, togri. This on account of the fact that in 2002, Section 86, Subsection 7, specifically made provision for the use of togs in Nigeria. It could be highlighted for Nigerians to see. That happened. And you recall, that what led to the problem where we had 2007 became the worst election, where we had numbers of killing in the country. Policemen were killed. Look at what happened on the 20th of April in Nasarawa. Nine policemen were killed. In, in um, Port Harcourt, seven were killed. In Delta, same thing. In Edo, same thing. In uh, um, Ekiti, same thing. All over across the country. That had to stop because election. It's a period where every citizen is expected to come forward to elect, to make a choice, particularly as you have to do with authorization as well as, you know, uh, the accountability principle. That's the only way you can get that done in a democracy. A democracy where people's vote do not count, it amounts to ritual without actually choosing. This must not happen. This 2023 election, Dr. Rubin, is one important election that we must not fail. Okay. Because there is anger in the okay. land. So people are talking about, let us reschedule election. At this stage, you cannot talk about rescheduling okay. election okay. anymore. Okay. It okay. has been fixed and it is firm. I quickly want to bring forward the issues about people that are trying to circumvent the use of beavers because that talk keeps coming back. I've fought every time. You've called and judiciary regards that. And also, you know, people that are trying to manipulate the elections by any means using the court. Also, these uncertainties, there is Ogo. For instance, Ogo State now, we don't even know who's the candidate of the PDP. Some states in the north, the Benani debacle is going on there. So we don't even know what's going on. Will they have candidates? Will they not have candidates and all of that? Let's talk about those things quickly. Very quickly, I have just talked about the fact that by 25th of February and March, we are not likely to know the candidate for this election. This is largely because all the efforts that have been made under the 2022 Act have all been violated by political parties. But again, I call on my, on my, on my constituents. This is where I keep talking about my constituency. That's where I have my worry. That we are still at the level of federal high court, where I usually have another 60 days at the Court of Appeal and Supreme Court, we are not likely to have a candidate. And that itself is a tragedy. But I'm aware that the task force has been set up for that purpose. Now, as for those who are thinking of how to bypass beavers, beavers let me say this here, and I've said it elsewhere that there are some provisions in the current act that I will never disclose. Because this provision, and for, look, for the assurance of Nigeria, when I say I don't want to disclose this here, let me be clear with you here. Those provisions were designed to secure, to protect 
the vote of the Nigerian people. And they will act as a shield as a, or, and also as a sword against those who want to assault the process. So, 2023, we have no choice de than the beavers. That is what we, INEC is going to use. That's what it has committed to. No other, op other option other than the beavers. Now, the beavers and the system are designed and secured by the act. That's why I keep thanking the National Assembly and the President for signing this into an act. Is the fact that whatever you do, if you think that in your pooling units that you are so influential, you are more popular in your local government, look, I can tell you here that you are going to lose everything because the system is designed in such a way that whereas what you try to do, you are not going to benefit from it, evidence of wrongdoing will be so well, clear my, my, that there will be nothing that you can do. We have just four minutes to go if you can keep this brief. Now, in Casino State, mm. the resident electoral commissioner there is saying there are security threats. That elections, it will be difficult to hold elections in about 242 polling units in 10 local government areas. Now, what they're planning in uh, Casino State is to see how voters can be relocated. How do you relocate voters because of security threats? Second, the uh, INEC chairman, when he was uh, at the House of Representatives, he said because of the floods, INEC has lost its offices, equipment in many states of Nigeria. Now, how does INEC deal with this? Ruben, um, those are matters that, of course, we will have institutions before where we have to uh, resort to what we call emergent plan. Because for every INEC plan, we have is both rational and emergent. I am very sure that just as they deal with the IDP situations in the past, that may be the situation they also need to, to apply. But quite frankly, uh, with respect to security that you talked about, who would have thought that we were able to put through an Abra situation? It is the duty of the, the security to do whatever that they, they could to ensure that in those identified areas in Casina, that uh, the people of Nigeria, our people, were able to vote on election day. I think that is the responsibility that we all need to deal with. But quite frankly, across the country, there's one challenge or the other. But as a people, we can only really succeed together by working together to ensure that we are able to do that. Because not to do have election, it will there be consequences for this country uh, by 2023. In fact, investment decisions are taken are based on even this our preparations and even the outcome of that election. And that's why we have to be very careful. And I call on everybody that look where we are right now. We are in a very delicate situation. Only thing that can take us out of the hole where we are is to have a peaceful, credible election by 2023 that will reflect the will of the people and by using the procedure and processes that I next have designed to deliver the will of the people by 2023. That is the only way, truly, as I've already said, that we can build a society real quick, where there will be opportunity for all and responsibility minute, from all. This issue about anecdotal transmitting results real time has been brought up. Uh, profile, I read that yesterday. That's, that's strange. I, I yes. don't know whether it's speculation. It is for the commission to officially speak to that. I'm out of the system. I will speak on what I've done before because I want to see it as a speculation. Otherwise, if you remove that, then what is left? Then what's left, left, left? The so let the, the commission to speak on that. I won't speak on that, you know. But quite frankly, 2023 election, nobody should toy with it at all. But in any case, your, as I've said, political parties, go and set up your situation room. As you get the result, you get the snap it and begin to, you know, collate. You cannot announce, but you must collate all the results and all that. So I next have to respond to that uh, issue that I've been I've reading about in the social media, even in the mainstream newspaper. No, in the mainstream newspaper. In the mainstream newspaper. Mainstream yeah, newspaper. yeah, yeah, you have to speak to that. Uh, we'll address Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Mikey Guinea for honoring our invitation. Thank you. Uh,